In the last lesson, we learned about Harry Hess and his idea of seafloor spreading. And that was a much better mechanism than Alfred Wegener had. But we still need proof. If we have a scientific theory, we can't just accept it without having evidence. The evidence for seafloor spreading is really going to come from paleomagnetism. So we think about what does paleomagnetism mean? Well, paleo means past. So paleomagnetism is going to be the past magnetism of the Earth. And I put proof at last. This really is concrete proof that the seafloor has spread and the continents have moved. And like I said, a little bit preview for the lesson. We're going to go back and get the history of this. But you can see what's coming up. Magma comes out. We had our convection cells under here. They're splitting like this. Magma comes out. It goes to either side. Magma comes out. goes to either side. Magma comes out. goes to either side. If we can prove that this line of lava here is the same as this one, this line here is the same as this one, this line here is the same as this one, and then this one here is the same as this one. If we can prove that the lava is symmetrical on either side of the valley, we've proved that the seafloor has spread apart to either side, like Hess said it did. So that's what we're going to try to do today. We're going to try to prove that the lava is symmetrical on both sides. Before we do that, we just need a really quick lesson on geomagnetism, since you might not know. Geomagnetism is just the magnetism of the Earth. So why does the Earth have a magnetic field? Simple answer is, the Earth has a magnetic field because the inner core spins faster than the rest of the Earth. Okay? The inner core spins faster than the rest of the Earth. That's why we have a magnetic field. I'm going to show a little bit of this video clip here that will try to explain it. The video is a little bit difficult, maybe, but the general idea is what I want you to get out of it. That we have our solid inner core, and you see it in the video there, it's spinning. It's spinning faster. So relative to the rest of it, going east-west, directions don't matter. But because it's spinning faster, it's basically an electric dynamo. An electric field is going to be generated. So you see this electric field, or this magnetic field, comes out of the South Pole and goes into the North Pole. Okay, so out of the South Pole into the North Pole. These are invisible lines of force. Okay, they're invisible for us, but our compasses can detect those lines of force. Well, the shape of the core here can change. And because it changes, that can change the speed. So what they're talking about here now is that the Earth's magnetic field actually can flip. So you see it here going, it's normal, now it's flipped the other way. Okay, it's going out of the south, right there, or out of the north. So it can switch. That can mean some bad things for us, or maybe for things on Earth. But it was good in, again, showing that these stripes on, of lava were symmetrical. And you see this kind of tilting here. We're going to talk about the magnetic North Pole is not the same as the geographic North Pole. So we're back to this page here. Let me get my pen back. I like the purple. So we see the Earth's inner core is spinning faster than the rest of the Earth. That generates magnetic field. Normally, it goes out of the South Pole and into the North Pole. Okay? That is called normal polarity. And we're going to talk more about that later. But normal polarity. It's what it is now. It's what it normally is. Magnetic field goes out of the south and into the north. Like I said, we can't see it. It's invisible. But compasses can detect it. So if you have your compass, your compass is going to point with these lines of force. Now, how this is important is certain rocks, volcanic rocks, like this lava here, you see it's very black in color. It's rich in minerals that have a lot of iron in them. 
the lava erupts as a liquid. Okay, it's lava. And these minerals, I'm just going to say this iron, this iron in it can gradually turn and line itself up with magnetic pole. Okay, so this lava in it, when it's first erupted, the iron in it is pointing all sorts of different directions, not lined up anywhere. It's just randomly pointing. But in that couple minutes that the lava takes to cool, all of that iron will line up like little soldiers pointing to wherever the North Pole is. So they're going to line up with these magnetic force lines. Then the lava is going to harden. Like I said, after a couple minutes, the lava is going to harden. And these are going to be stuck. It's like they're frozen in time. It's a past record of where the North Pole was. And that's what paleomagnetism is. Okay, it's this past record of where the North Pole was. So now we go back to this. We start talking about this paleomagnetism, this past record. And we're first going to talk about polar wander. And this was actually happened before this whole idea of plate tectonics and seafloor spreading came about. But I think it's pretty important. And you'll see, I think, why it fits in, why it helps to prove everything. So there's some guys. Uh, I can't remember the names. I think it was Cox, Dowell, and Dalrymple. Doesn't matter. There's some guys. What they were doing is they were looking at the past magnetism of Earth. So they would look at rocks. And right now, if you look at volcanic rocks that form today, they're going to point at the magnetic North Pole. Not the geographic North Pole, in case not where Santa's living up here. They're going to point the magnetic North Pole. Right now, the magnetic North Pole is somewhere in here. Okay, it, it moves a little bit, it varies. As you saw in that video, the core wobbles around, so the magnetic pole kind of wobbles around a little bit. But it's somewhere in Canada here right now. So that's where your compass is point. Okay, and that's why there's that little that little dial on your compass. So you can change the declination of your compass to make sure you're pointing to the geographic north or pointing to the the geographic north pole instead of the magnetic one. So what these guys did, they looked at rocks that are forming today. They looked at rocks, let's say in South America, and the rocks forming today, the iron in them points to the North Pole there. Rocks in Africa, let's say, pointing to, again, the North Pole there. Let's look at rocks in Australia, they point to the North Pole. Let's look at rocks in, I don't know, Madagascar, they point to the North Pole. Okay, obvious. Well, then what they did is they looked at rocks that were older. So now, let me change colors. Let's say they looked at rocks 10 million years ago. They thought, okay, they're going to point here. Well, they didn't. They pointed somewhere else. I'm just going to make something up. I'm going to say they pointed over here. And they said, okay, fine, because the pole moves around. We know the pole moves around. So they said the pole wandered from here to here. Okay, fine. They looked at the rocks 10 million years ago in Africa. Again, they should point here. But, no, they pointed, let's say they pointed over, oops, over here somewhere. They said, North Pole is here. And they're like, whoa, that's not good. We don't have two North Poles. Well, let's go to Australia and see where they point. The rocks, same age, they pointed, let's say, over here. And they're like, whoa, that's three different ones. Well, let's look at Madagascar, they point somewhere different. So they found that there were lots of North Poles. Well, that's impossible. So let's look at rocks even older then. Let's go back maybe 30 million years, for example. So let me change a different color again. What color will show up? Maybe a yellow. So again, they thought, okay, it's gonna, not going to point here. Uh, yellow's not going to show up. How about green? So it's not going to point here. Maybe it'll point here. Do it again, and let's say it points. Ah, oh, it points here. And I'm like, okay, fine, and it moved from here. One over here. Again, it should point to the green X. No, nope, point over here somewhere. And they're like, whoa. Over here, ah, uh, pointed somewhere over here. It pointed all different places. Again, they got lots and lots of different North Poles. They knew it was impossible. They threw out their work. They thought something must have been done wrong. Now, if this would have been after Wegener and Hess, 
they would have realized, and hopefully you guys kind of get it, that it wasn't the North Pole that was wandering. It was the continents that were wandering. And if what you did is kind of year by year, if this was today, this was 10 million years ago, this was, I don't know which one, this was 20 million years ago, whatever, numbers don't matter. If you reassembled Pangaea and put the continents all back together, all of these North Poles would merge to one North Pole. Okay? It all match. So if you reassemble Pangaea, go back to the time periods of each of where each of these that they studied, it would match. So there would be just one North Pole. And really it proved that all the continents were together because it was showing that all that iron in those past volcanic rocks pointed to the same place. Okay, and I can show that again in class um, to make sure you really get that idea. Here's another example of what they found. You see, okay, they had a polar wander curve here, they have a polar wander curve here. You get upset because, uh-oh, the North Pole can't be here and here. There's only one North Pole. What do you do? Well, you slide North America and South America together, or North America and Europe, you know, reform Pangaea, and all of a sudden these lines will match. Okay, they'll go back on top of each other. And you'll have one line once you reassemble Pangaea, and everything works. So it wasn't the North Pole that was wandering, it was the continents that were wandering. So now we're going to move ahead, if it will go. Okay. We have to do one last thing before we get to really figuring out these magnetic stripes that I showed you on the first page. And I'm just going to inform you, we're not going to watch the video, we're just going to go real quick. The North Pole has flipped at different times. Not the geographic, okay, the Earth isn't flipping. The magnetic field, the magnetic pole flips. We don't exactly know why that little video that I said showed you a little bit, but sometimes right now, as I said, we, the magnetic field goes from south to north, like that. Sometimes in the past, we know that it's flipped. It's gone the other way. It's gone north to south. That can mean some bad things. Because my, because what we find, well, let me show you what it is for sure. So this, oh, we're having some problems here. Let me try, see if this will work. Okay. Remember what is called today polarity? Today is called normal polarity. When the North Pole is the North Pole. White here, that's just how we're representing it. The lava isn't white. But white we're calling reverse polarity. So what we find when we look in the past at rocks, we look at that iron in the rocks, we find that sometimes it's pointing to the North Pole like it is today. But if we go 780,000 years ago, we find the rocks are pointing to the South Pole. Then we go to 900,000 years ago, they're pointing back to the North Pole. Go 1.06 million years ago, they're pointing to the South Pole. You see it flip-flops back and forth. Sometimes the North Pole's the North Pole, sometimes the South Pole's the North Pole. Okay, the magnetic field flips. So we don't exactly know why, but we know it does. A lot of people are worried about it because, as you see in this, our magnetic field protects us from a lot of harmful radiation from the sun. What we find in a lot of these flippings here, these boundary flips, we find lots of mass extinctions. So some people are worried about this because we are overdue for a flip, you see. We have been the same polarity, North Pole being North, for 780,000 years. So some people get worried about that, but we don't know if it's happening or when it's going to happen. So we're not going to worry about that. We're just going to use this knowledge that it's flipped in the past to prove Harry Hess was right. Still having some problems with this. Okay, and I like this quote because you didn't have to be very smart. All you had to do was be willing to go to sea. 
and if you measured anything, what you measured would be new. Remember, the ocean was this unfamiliar frontier. Okay, it was supposed to be flat. It wasn't flat. It was supposed to be cold. It wasn't cold. It was supposed to be dead. We're going to find it's not dead. They're finding all these different things. So if you went to sea, you found something that was new. Two guys really exemplified this. In 1963, there was Fred Vine and Drummond Matthews. Fred Vine was a university student, and Drummond Matthews was a professor uh, at Cambridge. And they were doing some mapping of the ocean floor. And as they were mapping the ocean floor, they were pulling behind them a magnetometer because they were looking for thermoclines and where the enemy subs could find, where they could find enemy subs. Didn't really work for what they wanted, but when they pulled this magnetometer behind their ship, they found something that astonished everybody. They found that the ocean floor was striped, and they did their work right here, south of Iceland in the Reykjane Jane Ridge. So they found the ocean floor was striped. Now, it wasn't striped color. It was striped with polarity. So remember, the black represents normal polarity. The white represents reverse polarity. So what they found on the ocean floor were these stripes. Sometimes when the lava erupted, the iron was pointing to the north. Other times it was pointing to the south. They didn't really see the significance of this, but a guy named Tuzo Wilson did. He saw the significance of this, and he said, these stripes better be symmetrical on both sides of the ridge. And if they are symmetrical, it proved Harry Hess was right with seafloor spreading. Okay, and we're going to draw a picture of what it shows. But you look at these stripes. This is an actual kind of what, they, what their readout was in the Rake Change Ridge. You see this big stripe here. It matches this big stripe here. And you have a fairly big white that matches this one. Big black one that matches this one. Okay? The stripes were symmetrical on both sides, so it showed that the seafloor spread to either side because it was exactly mirror image on both sides. You see it happening here. Okay, the lava erupts and it spreads to either side. Okay? Normal to either side, reverse to either side. Normal to either side, reverse to either side. I have another little animation that'll show that. Here. So the lava erupts, spreads to the side, and it's showing you the normal reverse. So reverse is the white, and then normal, and then reverse, and then normal. What you see is, again, that these stripes are symmetrical. So if I pause it here, you can look at this. It's symmetrical, 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 symmetrical. Each side of the valley is exactly the same. So it was obvious to Tuzo Wilson and to other people that the ocean floor had spread to either side. And if the ocean floor is spreading to either side, wouldn't the continents be spreading too? Yes. So Harry Hess was right. Uh, we're going to skip the video because we're running long here. And again, it's showing you this idea. We're going to make a quick drawing of this. So let me get, let's start off with, oh, I can draw it in red. So we start off with our ocean floor. I'm just going to do a simple picture, our mid-ocean ridge like that. We had our valley like that, going down. Okay. This is our lithosphere, like this. Remember, we have our athenosphere down here. Convection cells rising up, spreading to either side, going down, like this. So, if we have some lava erupting right now today, what polarity will it be? It's going to be normally polarized. So I'm going to put this. This is our lava erupting right now today. Okay. And it's going to keep erupting, spreading to the side. But in, let's say, 100 million years, or 100, let's say 100,000 years, the poles flip. Okay, so this purple is going to be my normal polarity. So 100,000 years in the future, the poles flip. So what's erupting now? It's going to be reverse polarity. And it's hard to do it on here without you know, erasing it and redrawing it. So I'm just going to do it this way. I'm going to find a different color. And I'm going to put my reverse polarity here. 
I'm going to put a thick stripe of reverse. So matching that on the other side is going to be a thick stripe of reverse. So this color is the reverse polarity. Wait another 100,000 years. Okay, it's split again. I go back to my purple color. And now I'm just going to put a really thin line here. If I have a really thin line on this side, on this side, I also have a really thin line like that. Okay. And then I may put maybe a thicker one like that, a thicker one like that. Okay. Again, the key is they're going to be symmetrical on both sides of the valley. So I have a thick reverse here, a thick reverse here. So it was obvious that imagine if I had a continent, okay, the continent was, let me get a different color again. So imagine I had a continent here, like maybe this is South America here, and maybe this is Africa here. Okay, Just move it, each line, one at a time, each line over. Okay, moves over here, moves over here, moves over here. At the same time, Africa will be moving one block at a time. So gradually, the continents would have spread apart. Okay, so this idea is what finally showed that seafloor spreading was right. We do need to do one other thing, and that's going to be with the Glomar Challenger, but we'll do that on a quick one next time.